So we're going to set up a project to access the LCD on the disco board. So select new STM32 project. Select the board via the board selector. STM32 F769i disco. Enter a project name. Initialize all the peripherals to their default states. Select no for the time being on the code generator for free RTOS. So first of all, in system core, we need to disable the watchdogs just to make things a little bit easier to start with. In connectivity, we need to go to the quad SPI and select bank one with quad SPI lines. This is where our image is going to get stored. We need to disable the SD multimedia card. In multimedia, select the LTDC and we need to uh, make sure that the active width is 800 pixels. That's the width of our display. And also the height should be 480. And if we go to DCI host, you'll see that uh, in the LTDC interface, this will be reflected in the um, frame horizontal timings and vertical timings. So next what we want to do is go into computing and we need to make sure that there's at least uh, channel zero set up for um, parallel input. Um, this is because the digital filters, uh, there's a compilation flag that's utilized when you incorporate the SAI um, interfaces when they're enabled, which they will be by, by default. So we also need to go to FreeRTOS and make sure that that's disabled as our starting point. So when all that is done, we can file save and this will run the automatic code generation. And you'll see in the Project Explorer, we have a main file that's been created within source. And also the HAL drivers have been included. So what we'll need to do is copy in some board support files from the repository. And we put these in the drivers area. And we also need to copy in utilities, which the LCD is going to use. And this is where files uh, such as fonts live, which will be uh, useful to write to the LCD with. Now, there will be some components in there that we don't need, but just for now, by default, just, uh, just, just leave them all in. So next, what we do is right click on our project and go to properties. Select C slash C++ build. And in settings, we're going to set up the include paths for the C compiler. And we're also going to add in a preprocessor flag. So the flag is up on the screen now. That will enable us to build the LCD driver for the um, MB1166 board that's on the disco. So put that into preprocessor. And then in the include paths, we need to place the links to the um, BSP support files. So they'll be in drivers forward slash BSP components.
and there's also the drivers forward slash bsp stm files stm directory so finally just make sure that the uh, the core ink path is is above everything and we should be good to go so apply and close and at this point we should be able to build okay so there are no errors if you go into source main.c file this is where we can start entering code to initialize the no flash and also the lcd so we need to place within user code begin includes the link to our image that we want to place on the LCD. So you can create this image using bin to C. In my case, I've called this test underscore image underscore splash dot H, which is just an 800 by 480 bitmap that I've converted into a header file. Then after all the peripherals are initialized, in the main user code, user code begin to section. I'm going to enter all my initialization code for the LCD. So I'm going to copy this code in. And we have the initialization code for the NOR flash, followed by the LCD inits. So these are calls to the HAL libraries and the BSP support libraries to uh, set up the LCD. And finally, the last line is the one that draws the bitmap onto the screen. You see this is the header file that's been created using the bin to C. And we compile. Now I've left some errors in here, so these would be typical of what you might find if you uh, if you do this process. So I'm seeing some errors here that the um, LCD frame buffer isn't initialized, uh, isn't recognized, and we've got some symbols um, that are not recognized. So this will be to do with the um, header file uh, where we haven't included the board support header files themselves. So you might see this error. If you do, um, then you need to think about the header files that uh, you were utilizing, which are for the LCD themselves and the, um, the no flash. And these want to go into the main .h file. And they want to go in the user code begin includes area. I've included one for the touch screen as well. We're not going to actually use those functions just yet. And we need to create an on error handler function. So this will just be what gets called when we initialize some of the peripherals. Pop that in the user code begin zero area. And we have a build with no errors. Okay, so now we need to make a few small changes to the linker directive files to enable the images or the, the, the main image that we've uh, got to go into the external NOR flash. You'll see from the, um, the header file the uh, the image header file itself, it's going into a section we've called ext flash section. So we need to define that in the linker, the linker directive file. The first one we're going to change is in flash ID. You will see that there is a NOR flash that is defined within the memory definition area 
And also at the bottom of the file, we're saying that the section, X flash section, is going to go into that external null flash area. We we'll also do the same within the RAM ID file. Now, this will compile and produce the ELF file. What we may have to do uh, in order to place that external image into external ROM is to use an external loader uh, using the STM32Q programmer. So, if we load up the STM32Q programmer and connect it to our device. What you can then do is select the external loader that's being used. So select external loaders. And you need to make sure that the appropriate external loader is enabled and that the loader is pointing to that start address uh, and it's specified that that's no flash. So what, what we're able to do now is memory area that is being uh, programmed that it exists external to the STM32 will be, will be programmed using the loader that we are choosing here. What you can do is select the file. and then click download and that will flash both the internal memory of the device and flash the any um, sections of data that need to go into the external NOR flash. That will then be accessible by the STM32.